Um, okay. I actually had, it looks like a few different people have asked me about like what to do with social media. I guess, uh, Brian, Professor Brian Wolfmuller just, so he's taking a break from social media because of the negativity, legalities, algorithms, et cetera. I'd have a few other people asking me about that. Um, I will say that it is very good that he did that for his own sanity. And if I was more sane than I am, I would do the same thing. <laughs> uh, yeah, no, honestly, it is. It, the social media world is, is, is a mess, I think, um, as political ideas are heightened and just with everything going on now, I don't want to get political in any way at all, but it's a mess. Like social media is a mess. I, I think that um, we need to be probably more okay getting rid of social media and not relying on it. Um, I think doom scrolling is really bad and it kind of ruins people's lives. Sometimes <laughs> I, I see a lot of Christians, especially they, they are just um, kind of so pessimistic about the world because they're on social media, looking at things too much. And, and, you know, myself included too, I'm not saying I'm, I mean, from this, um, it's probably good to just put it down. So I have no other comment other than that. Um, yeah. Oh, the hardcore Trump people are killing me on Twitter. Yeah, I, <laughs> yeah, uh, yeah. If you don't follow me on Twitter, you might not want to because sometimes I do mention political things on Twitter. Uh, I, I honestly try not to be political at all most of the time. Um, I, I'm never told anyone who to vote for. I never talk about my issue, my perspective on you know, healthcare or the economy or anything like that. Like I have no desire to delve into that. There are people that do that and that's not me. I'm a theologian. Um, there are times when it is appropriate and I think even necessary for someone who is a theologian uh, or a pastor to speak out on evils of the culture. And sometimes it's really hard to find the line between um yeah, where it is you're politically speaking up and where that intersects with theology because those things always intersect and you don't want to be commenting on politics too much as someone who's in the, the world of theology. Um, you don't want to be partisan. You don't want to tell people who to vote for, who not to vote for, all of those kinds of things. Um, and I did say some things about where things have... It, Okay, so I have, thank you, Ardith, I appreciate that. <laughs> I'm glad you think there's balance there. Um, so I have called out starting, and, and, I've, and I know, the fact is when I call this out, I know that I will lose donors because I do every time I mention anything like this, but it, it is what it is. So um, I have called out um, the alt-right in, back in 2015 uh, when that movement rose to prominence. I had a lot of concern, concern about it. I uh, listened to a lot of what people like Richard Spencer and Jared Taylor and these people had to say. I thought it was very problematic from a Christian perspective, uh, and the the kind of the kind of nationalism that I saw um, that identifies um, national identity with white identity and conflates Christian identity with white identity. Those things are are really bad. I would say problematic, but that's like my my careful way of saying it. No, I mean, it's downright sinful. So uh, I think I needed to call those things out at the time. My stance has not changed on the issue. I haven't said as much until recently when things kind of have blown up around the election. I have spoken up about the kind of violent rhetoric that I've seen, uh, violent rhetoric that I've seen from Christians regarding Trump when Eric Metaxas said that we should be ready to, to spill blood uh, over this these issues of Trump getting into office. I, I said I'm very concerned about a conflation of national American identity and Christian identity. That conflation is a conflation of the two kingdoms or uh, the three estates or two of the three estates as, as we have as distinctions from, from Luther that are really bad. Um, you know, it, tying your Christian identity to your national identity in a, in an extreme way is not good. I mean, this happened in Nazi Germany, you know, that's the extreme example. I'm not, no, I'm not saying that everyone is a Nazi who's a nationalist. Um, but I think it is, it's, it's bad. Um, and I think that the kind of even defenses that I've seen of breaking into the Capitol building is crazy. You know, people are defending this stuff. I think I think it's crazy. I think we need to call that out for what it is. It's it's sin. And while we do speak up 
when we see injustice, we can speak our political views as Christians. We have to do it in a way that is respectful. This is, this is true like across the board. I don't care what your political view is. Um, we need to do things in a way that is respectful for the record. When, um, you know, the, the BLM protests started recently and the looting and rioting began, I spoke up on that as well as, as sinful. I think we need to speak up against in, injustice, but we need to do it in a way that is respectful and loving. I mean, the early Christians dealt with this extensively. I was just thinking about this this morning as um, I was reading, I just was reading through um, first Peter this morning and you know, I, I love the epistle of first Peter. It's one of my favorites. Uh, something I've, I've thought about doing at some point is doing some Bible studies, not as a podcast, but just like a separate thing going through kind of passages of scripture and talking about them, which I may do at some point. Um, but look at how, you know, Peter talks about the way we should treat government in first Peter two, uh, therefore verse 13, submit yourselves to every ordinance of man for the Lord's sake, whether to the King as supreme or to governors as to those who are sent by him for the punishment of evildoers and for the praise of those who do good. For this is the will of God that by doing good, you may put to silence the ignorance of foolish men as free yet not using liberty as a cloak for vice, but as bond servants of God, honor all people, love the brotherhood, fear God, honor the King. So this honor to our authorities and respect for authorities and doing things decently and in order with love and kindness toward, toward all and honor and respect toward all. This is, I mean, key to the Christian ethic. And I don't care what your political views of things are. There are very obviously ways to do it in, to deal with issues in a Christian way and ways to deal with issues in a, in a non-Christian way. So um, I'm, I'm not, again, I'm not making any statements about things political in terms of who's right about what or the election or anything like that um, regardless of what your stance is i think we have to call out what is what is sin and treating the authorities in that way is is sin um so that's something that i think we've seen on both sides of the political spectrum at this point within this this past year um, and I think we would do well to just read a lot of um, the early Christians and the Christians in Rome and just read what they're, what they're saying. Okay, so this is something I was called out for by, you know, a lot of Trump supporters and not just Trump. And I've said this like a ton of times is it has nothing to do with supporting Trump or not or whether they voted for Trump or not. None of that matters. For, for the record, I didn't vote for Biden or Trump. Okay. I am a libertarian. Okay. I've said this like a bunch of times. Nobody agrees with me. I vote third party every presidential election. I'm not going to try to convince you that I'm right. But that's like, I don't trust the government to do much of anything. So that's, that's where I'm at. Right. If you saw my pictures of my punk rock self, I was an anarchist as a teenager. And I think <laughs> came to realize as a Christian that God instituted government. So like, that's good. And we have to see that as a good, but I also don't trust it very much at all. So but that, but that doesn't matter. You don't need to know my political view because it doesn't matter. And I'm not going to uh, like condemn your political view on economics or anything else because it's not not my not my thing to do. So you're welcome to tell me that I'm wrong about that. I really don't care. Um, <laughs> that's fine. Okay. Um, thank you. Okay. You certainly cannot be accused of being a leftist considering your most popular video is about cultural Marxism. Yes. Like I. <laughs> I, my most popular video is about cultural Marxism. I, I by the way, have, I've, have videos on intersectionality where I condemn intersectionality uh, and, and talk about what I think is problematic about intersectionality, why I don't think it's, it's a helpful methodology. I have videos about modern gender theory. I dealt with uh, modern gender theory, queer theory in my prolegomena book because I think it's so essential. I'm gonna be dealing with that more in my anthropology volume, which I'm not looking forward to the pushback on that. Uh, so I'm not some kind of art progressive like at all, but I what I call out is what I see as sin and unbiblical ways of dealing with things and unbiblical ideologies and ones that harm the church. I do think intersectionality is an unbiblical ideology. I think there's a root of truth in it to an extent, which is why it appeals to people, but I don't think it's an ideology that the church should be grabbing onto. But I also... I'm not one to just say everything is bad in just a, you know, this kind of um, blanket, blanket sense. Okay. 